Hi there, welcome back. No, it's not the flip through. It's a quickie. I realized there was something else I wanted to do on Mrs. Cratchit's journal. Here's here's the welcome to Mrs. Cratchit's journal. <laughs> Her notes missing because it's already the, the notes already inside Mrs. Cratchit. So, so so that's it. All we have today is joy. And you know what? If we've got joy, we've got everything. Ain't that the truth? So thanks for joining me. If you're new here, I'm Catherine. I live up in Canada on the north shore of Lake Ontario in a little town about an, about an hour east of Toronto, maybe longer if it's rush hour. We have terrible traffic. Um, there was one last thing that I wanted to do for Mrs. Cratchit's journal. And thank goodness I looked through it. I always have a basket going of things. When I have ideas for a journal, I throw it in the basket and I'll keep the journal in the basket as I'm working on it. Sometimes I have more than one journal going at once and I label them so that I can stack them. And um, I knew I wanted to maybe put a tassel on her. And these ones looked way too new. And I found an older looking tassel that I want to put on her. And that was in the basket. But another thing that was in the basket was the original spine from the book that was falling apart. And I thought, this really needs to go into the book. So... Again, originally, I thought what I was going to do is put a uh, eyelet here and put the tassel on there. But I think what I'm going to do is, this is leftovers. I've already got started on it, so I apologize. But this is leftovers from, it's an off cut from the end pages, end papers, um, that went into the book. So, you know us, we make use of whatever we can. And it sort of offers some continuity to the book. So, I, what I'm going to do is make a bookmark with, um, using the rest of the end papers, I'm going to glue on... I'm going to glue the actual old original spine onto this bookmark. And then I'm going to put an eyelet into the bookmark. And that way the eyelet is not permanently... Let me move this up so you can see what I'm talking about. There, that's better. Oh, jeepers. It would help if we were in focus in the picture here. Anyhow, we are now. So I thought if I put the tassel on the bookmark, it serves two purposes. The bookmark's nice and big. It serves three purposes. Because the bookmark's nice and big, easy to find, makes use uh, and honors the original spine that I had to take out, and uh, uses up the end papers. So what I did... Like I said, I got started on it and I thought, why am I not bringing along my company? You're all my company as I work here. I talk to you, even if it's just in my head. If the camera's not going, I still, my head's still going. So, and then I thought, what do I do on the other side? Because this was a file folder and it actually had a Hillroy file folders or something written on the back. So I used uh, a page out of the text block and I used evening prayer. And I just took it out of the center of the page so that we got evening prayer there. And I've already inked around to the edge. And the page wasn't quite as tall as the bookmark, and I wanted the bookmark tall. 
So fortunately, I had a little bit more off cut from the other side of, of the back, either the back or the front, one or the other. This was a paper bag that came that had Happy Mail in it at one point. So we, this truly is a beautiful junk journal. It's been put together with other people's stuff. And I cannot tell you the joy. Ah, oh, here we go. I can't, I just cannot describe the joy that that gives me. Making something pretty out of stuff that people might have. If thrift stores didn't exist, it would have gone to the garbage dump. Probably, or the burn pile, depending on where you live. So now I thought about, I tried to put in punch a design into this and it really didn't work very well so what I'm going to do is there's some holes there that are glaring at me and they might not be glaring at you but they're glaring at me so here I'll show you they, they're little lacy holes but they're the color of the file folder so I'm just going to go in and color those holes black. I tried to ink them. The ink did not want to do what I wanted it to do. So thank goodness for micron pens. Micron pens will fit in those little holes and will do what I want it to do. I think I need a, a better one. Hold on. We have ways of making these things cooperate. Maybe an 05. Come on. I know I've got an 05 here somewhere. There's an 03. 02. 05. Let's try the 05. There we go. All right. O5 said, I'm up for the job. Give it to me. So we will just, part of my challenge is there's glue under there. But I think this will camouflage it because it will just look like it's part of that damask um, pattern of the little gift bag. that it was in. And I'll just fill these little spots in. And then it camouflages it. I'm all for camouflage. Much better. The nice thing about making one of these journals, and it really is almost like a Cratchit all sorts journal, is um, if things don't look perfect, I kind of like that because I want this book to have the appearance that several people have owned it and added their own addition to it. And maybe it came into their possession as a young girl and had not quite learned, honed her skills of either writing or knitting or sewing or, do you know what I mean? And that the charm of that, I'm going to go around this, I think, around this edge and make it a little more noticeable. I hope you're well. I hope this is a nice surprise. Don't usually see me in the afternoon especially when I've already had a video in the morning. But here we are. Yeah, I like that better. Oh, there's a little hole that I missed. Heaven forbid. 
there. Yes, I like that better. Let me lift that up so you can see. See? All right. <sighs> yeah, I'm happy. It's the, the Apostles' Creed is there. And uh, just makes me happy. So now with this side... We're going to have to use um, either 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac. I have 3-in-1, so that's what I'll be using today. Because this is not only fabric, but it's also some old mull. There's all kinds of old leftover antique crud in here. So... I've done my best to get most of it off so that I'll, the adherence will be good, that the glue can do its job and glue down this, this beautiful old piece of this book so it can go with it to its new home. I've done that before. Made a bookmark out of the old spine kind of a neat thing to do so that you feel like you truly feel like you've honored the old book and the person who obviously loved this book it was well worn so Mrs. Carr and maybe members of her family Loved this book and made good use of it. And we'll just pretend that Mrs. Carr perhaps was Belinda Cratchit and married someone named William Parker Carr. That's Mrs. Carr's husband's name was William Parker Carr. You know, I think about it. Park your car. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know, because they didn't exist then when I found them. I don't think. I found them in the 1871 Canadian census. There we go. All right, so let's do some... Uh... Although, you know what? They called one of my ancestors in the census back then, um, where it said occupation... He was listed as a car man, and so I looked that up because I thought, what the heck's that, a car man? But it was simply a man who essentially, in that day and age, uh, drove a cart and horse to, that people could flag down, not unlike taxis. Um, and so that's what was considered a car man from what I, from what I read. So those who are more historically educated can let me know. But from what I read, that's what a car man did. He drove a horse with a buggy for use and could be flagged down and used by the general public. I had one ancestor, John Joseph Martin, and early in his career he was a sailor and he went back and forth across the ocean several times. Uh, according to his obituary, his most famous voyage was he was on the ship that carried Chang and Ang Bunker, who were conjoined twins. They were in the circus for a long time. Married twin sisters. I don't know whether they were twin sisters, but married sisters, and they both had huge families. Anyhow, so I have a relative who most likely met Chang and Ang, because it would have been a long, um, a long journey. Who knows? And that's, that was his claim to fame. But when he finally came back and left sailing and 
got a land job. He uh, delivered milk around town. But in the census, it said he was a cowman. And I thought, how can he live in London and be a cowman? Because <laughs> the city of London by then very much was a city. And uh, it turns out that that was the way that they had written. Um, to, he delivered milk for a dairy. Here we go. So we're just going to center that as best we can. And flatten that out. There. And it's going to have to go under my brick for a while. So although I'm going to pause it, it'll seem like a split second for you. But I want this uh, well, not only well adhered, but I'd like to try and get it as flat as possible. And it's been curved for what, 160 years, 1880, 140 years. It's been part of a curved spine. Oh, I really love that. This is one of those serendipitous things. When it came to me, what to do, thank goodness, three in one, Let's you still slide things. <laughs> if this was paper and that was art glitter glue, that would be it. Boom, down, it's glued. No going back. Now that needs that needs a bit under. I just love when something serendipitous happens, and I believe this was. First of all, I'm glad that I looked in the box before I decided this was completely done. Yeah. That needs more under there. What I'm doing is smearing it towards the um, the old spine so that I don't get shiny glue onto the paper. And if I do, oh well. That will be one of, we'll file that under, oh well. We can only do what we can do and if these ends start coming up on the new owner you know what to do because it's usually junk journalers that buy other junk journals <laughs> so oh gosh that's nice let me find a brick we're gonna put it under a brick I'm going to put a piece of paper there. So that's going to go under there and I'm going to pause. And so for me, it'll be maybe half an hour for you. It will be like that. Okay. So I took the time to go through the text block and pick out what I thought would be some interesting pages. Um, to send along with Mrs. Cratchit's book. There's a few that mention prayers for Victoria, who was queen at the time when this book was published. Um, 
and she must have been a widow at the time because it offers prayer on, prayers on behalf of the royal family. Um, but Albert the father is not mentioned. Only Albert the Prince of Wales is mentioned. Uh, there's a prayer for him. Um, so this obviously was published um, after she had become a widow. Come on. I'm a, I am um, apologizing ahead of time for the disgusting condition of my hands. Winter and water, and that's where I chomped my own finger. Remember when I was thinning out my hair last week and I thinned out my own thumb? <laughs> um, and then the glue, my... My skin doesn't naturally doesn't like three in one because it's acetone based, and I I never bothered to take the time to put gloves on because it's just not the same. You don't get the feel with gloves. So we have that. I have some rusted paper clips that I've already prepared. I really like how they look once they've been um, sealed with clear nail polish. I don't believe they need it. Some people believe oh, it's rust. You must seal it. I disagree. I don't think it needs it, but I do like how it looks. I think it gives it a really nice, um, a really nice glow almost. There we go. So I pulled that too far apart. There. Okay. Um, might use one of these. This is meant for more paper, thicker paper. Maybe if I put it on the side. There we go. That's better. All right. So that will go with Mrs. Cratchit when she goes to her new home. And you're probably saying, Catherine, what about the brooch? No, no, no. You don't get to see where the brooch goes till tomorrow. <laughs> the brooch will have to wait. Okay, so, oh, come on. Don't give me heartache, thank you. Now, what I want to do is I want to put an eyelet down here. Oh, I want to finish, wait. I want to finish inking where I had to do some trimming. It needs to be inked in here. All along these edges. So I don't know if you are getting in a Christmassy mood. I certainly am. And like I said, I prefer a simple Christmas. I'm not into Spending thousands of dollars on gifts. That's not my kind of Christmas. <sighs> so when you enjoy a simple Christmas, I think it's easier to enjoy it and not get so caught up in the rush and the worry. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do my plum puddings this year or not. They are physically demanding to create. There's a lot of standing and chopping and there's a lot involved in all the steaming. And I feel a little sad about that, but I don't think at least for this year until um, I'm doing very well. Don't get me wrong. I'm doing very well. But until my medications really kick in, um, I don't, I don't want to overdo it. A pencil. So one year without. Oh, that's two inches. Isn't that nice? All right. 
Oh, I want to do it on the other side because I want to be able to fit it in that little crevice. Two, down, and I'm just going to put a little X here. Let's get this pre-ready. And then when I'm done, I will record the flip through for tomorrow. Boy, I hope I can stop talking in the flip through. Some things never change. And my teachers were right when they used to write, Catherine needs to sp not spend so much time visiting with her friends, visiting with her neighbors, they'd say. <laughs> In other words, talking. <laughs> but come on, you know, talking with your friends. And it was never to cheat. It was always just to visit. That's good. It's tempting to do more to this, and I'm not going to. I, I think I really do want to leave it just looking so that it's very, very clear that this was the original book spine. Now, this still isn't yellow enough for my liking, and it is quite yellowy and I love that it's already starting to fall apart. This was definitely, the glue is starting to yellow. Um, I'm not even sure whether it was a blind pull. I think there were two on it and I've already used the one. I think that's why it's trimmed there. I am going to take a little faux privilege and um, linen and just yellow it a little bit more, make it a little more dirty and worn out. Had a nice chat with my brother today. It's, uh, it's, I'm just I know I keep saying it, but I'm really grateful that we sort of managed to find each other again after a few years of him being kind of quiet and me being extremely busy taking care of my mother and my father for a long time. I think you guys mostly came in during the period where it was my mom I was mostly taking care of, but when my father was alive. He was a lot of work as well because he had COPD and he hated wearing his oxygen machine. And when you have low oxygen, and trust me, if he took off his oxygen nasal cannula, his SATs could drop to 70%. And that's like brain damage range. <laughs> you, you should... The, they like you to be between like 97 and 100 and my dad could drop to 70 and uh, so he could become just as confused as my mother and not be aware of it and therefore um, get angry and frustrated, mostly frustrated. And it must be frustrating. I know how frustrated I feel right now in a 64-year-old body. Well, not quite 64 yet. Give me a couple more weeks. But, um... My dad was always so busy. Right up until he was like 86, he was playing tennis almost every day. And I think that's why he did so well with his COPD. Is he kept very active. Now I wonder if I can do a bow here or not. Let's try it and if we have to we'll take it out. Um, so 
when dad was alive too, it could be very, very difficult um, with mom with dementia and dad with his oxygen off, just as confused as her and both of them very angry a lot of the time because they couldn't go to Florida because of course they by then they had so many health problems they needed the universal health care we have here in Ontario. They needed to be able to have oodles of free health care. Yeah, that's nice. I am going to put a drop of I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this. I know I probably could use art glitter glue just to hold this in place, but I really want to make sure it's held. So, and I don't mind if it looks kind of mucky because, again, we're talking 1880s here. Bring on the muck. Look at the time. Where does, how do I get to 31 minutes already? And then I'm going to mash it into that knot. Now, if the new owner does not like this, they can cut it off and dangle whatever they want off there. I always like to remind so that new owners, I, I wouldn't ever want them to receive a journal and think, oh, they can't change this. Catherine did it this way. No, no, no. It's your journal. You do as you wish. Now, for these ends, I do want them frayed. I want them to look their age and a little worn out. And we're going to make them a little dirty. Oh, thank goodness for inks. So that, oh, that looks nice. Let's see what it will look like when it's in the book. And then we will part ways and I'll see you in the morning when we have, when I can clean up this mess. Oh my goodness, I can't show you my desk. It's embarrassing how bad it is. Oh, wait, let me show you my latest discovery that is has made my life easier. It's all about sharing our little things that have made life easier. I love makeup brushes for inking for the most part. These are also helpful for extreme inking, especially edges. Like if you want to do the edge, this is, will do a better job. But for a gentle, soft inking makeup brushes. And make sure you get them at... Dollarama, Dollar Tree, Dollar Stores. Um, I was having trouble finding, because I have them for the different colored inks. And I have this beautiful coral colored flower frog. And it was just sitting on my shelf doing nothing. And uh, now I can put my different, uh, like here's acorn. I write it on the back when I can find my white pen, red, black. Um, couldn't find my white pen, so that one got a label, green. And uh, I have gold here somewhere. Again, couldn't find my white pen, so I just wrote gold in gold. <laughs> But it does the trick, and sometimes, oh, this is also linen, but I know it's linen. Uh, this is for when I want to do a fast aging of a big piece of paper. That big one comes in handy with antique linen. And then I will also just pinch. I find that with these uh, scissors, much as I love them, the Fisker scissors, especially if you have arthritis, they're a wonderful scissor. But this part breaks very quickly. There's a lock here that will hold your blades close together. It breaks very quickly, for me at least. Um, I just close them together and put them in one of the holes, and there we go. I've got 
my, um, let's move that, I've got all my ink brushes in one place, easy to grab, easy to read the uh, colors that they're for, and uh, I just keep them up over there. And they, that that discovery this week changed was a change a week changer for me. So let's pretend we're putting our our book spine bookmark in. And there we go. Oh yeah, let's move this so you can see better. Yep. Yep. I'm happy girl. Happy, happy girl. Now I've just got to go through it, do my little last minute detail check, put my ribbon around it, put my brooch on it, and uh, we'll be ready to do a, a flip through. So thanks for joining me today, even though it's not my usual time. You're pr I probably surprised y'all. Ha ha! Surprise! And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'm going to, uh, Kirby and I are going to go have some L-U-N-C-H. And then I'm going to record a flip through. So I hope you have uh, something to keep you busy that you enjoy for the rest of the day. And we'll get together tomorrow. Take care. Thanks for joining me. If you're still here, you know what to do. Help me buy my glue. Click like and even say hi in the comments. YouTube likes me even more when you comment. So uh, feel free to just say hi or just leave a little happy face with a smile. Uh, that'd be terrific. That still counts as a comment. Yay. Bye.